thank you for coming to the Bloomberg studio. No problem. You're an author of two books now? Uh, five. Five books now, sorry. Um, and uh, in those books you describe your life as a bank robber. Mm. You were the most popular bank robber in the UK how many years ago? Um, I got out of prison in 2010. Um, I served 12 years out of my last sentence for that, so I haven't really robbed since the 90s. Oh, okay. Mm. And uh, before that you were a bank robber for about 40 years? 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. Um, visiting more than 200 banks? Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Do you know how many people actually envy you? Seriously? Yeah, they, they, they want to know how does it feel? I mean, one, two, three, ten banks, but two hundred. Uh, it becomes kind of like a habit. You get addicted to it. Uh, it's one of those things. I mean, it, it's great when you're doing it, but the price you pay afterwards is pretty hefty. I mean, I spent 30 years in prisons. So um, the money I would stole from robbing 200 banks, I could have earned from labouring on a building site in those 20 years. You know, people right now are thinking, I mean, I don't believe that. I mean, probably he's got millions somewhere. I mean, 200 banks, come on. I, I want to do that and I'm ready to stay in prison, but let me have this money. That's, that's what some people think. I mean, not, all, not, not everyone, obviously, but um, yeah, a lot of people really, um, in a way, enjoy this. Probably because of the films, because of, because of songs, but um, is it really such a nice experience? I think um, armed robbery and bank robbery in particular has got a kind of, a, as you say, a sort of romantic reputation because of the films and the songs and whatever over the years. And, and armed robbers, a lot of people will see someone who robs a bank as not really, you know, it's not the criminal they're afraid of. They're afraid of the criminal who's going to break their windows or, you know, burgle their house or beat up their children or whatever. So, so armed robbers, people kind of, if you're robbing banks, people kind of give you a buy, if you know what I mean. But it's not that glamorous, to be honest with you. I mean, it's great when you're actually doing the work, when you're actually, uh, we called it work because it was our full-time job. It's great when you're um, actually carrying out the robberies and you get away and nobody's been hurt and you've got a nice few quid wrapped around you. That's fantastic and spending it is great, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> as I say, you do pay a price for it and the British prison system is not really, it's not the worst in the world, but it's not the best either. What do you do right after you leave the bank? I mean, you get bags of money and then what do you do right after you, you leave the bank with all those money? Well, there's a process, there's a routine involved. I mean, particularly if you're a professional robber, you will go, you will have your changeover car. So whichever bank you leave the, whichever car you leave the bank in, you will then transfer to another vehicle. You'll go back to your slaughter or flop, which will be a place where you share out the money. Um, and you'll have a share out of the money and have a little sing and a dance and then if you've got plenty of money and then um, you go your separate ways. Do you bury it? Do you spend it straight away? What do you do with it? Um, a lot of the times we would just keep it with us, you know, wherever I was living I would have the money close by. Um, you know, because the thing you've got to remember, if you work for money, you're very careful about how you spend it. If you steal the money and you know you can steal more, you, you spend like a sailor on home leave, you know. you. You go out and spend your money. That's what you do until it's you're nearly running out, and then you do another one. You get together and plot another another robbery. So, <laughs> um, well, also a lot of people want to know how do you do this. I mean, have you got kids calling you and asking you, teach me, teach me? Um, I got some of that years ago. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fairly out of the game now. You know, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've actually robbed anything, but. Um, in the old days, it was kind of, yeah, it was the older people taught the youngsters, you know, you were kind of, if they spotted you had a bit of potential, someone would take you aside and say, listen, don't be doing that, what you want to do is this. And you learn as you go along from other robbers, because whenever you get arrested or put in prison, you're mixing with other robbers, so they will tell you where you've gone wrong, and you <laughs> learn your trade, really, in prison. Oh, I see. Um, do, do you think that actually... Um that, that makes a criminal even bigger criminal. Do, do you think if, if, if um, they keep you somewhere separate or if they don't put you in prison straight away, that would actually make you change your mind and don't, you know, yeah. don't go on with this? Do, do you think that actually in prison people become more professional? I do, yeah, and I base that on my own experience and the experience of other people who I've known. I mean, I went to prison as a young uh, kid 
of the age of 14 for stealing motorbikes. Whilst I was in prison, I met somebody who could supply me with a firearm at a cheap price. And, um, you know, and, and all the time I spent in prison after that, I always learned. Because what happens is, it's a strange thing, really, if I can explain. When you get arrested for something in this country and you're in prison, what they do is the prosecution supply you with what they call the depositions, which is all the statements made by everybody involved in the crime. Everybody gets these. And in prison, the armed robbers will pass them around. So you might get somebody who's robbing Barclays Bank. You're robbing, say, HSBC. You look at the Barclays Bank and you'll notice in the statements it will say certain things like, if I'm in early as the key holder, I will open the curtain on the left-hand side. They have to tell you this in the statements. I open the left-hand side of the curtain. We have lockable till drawers, whatever. So you learn your trait by reading these statements and talking to other robbers. Huh. Yes, it is, prison is really, I know it sounds a cliche, but it is a college of further criminal education. Have you ever heard anyone, I mean, you said that those were all armed robberies, but mm. have you ever heard anyone? Did you actually want to hurt someone or you, you were really interested in, in the money, not, not well, it's, it's strange. I've never actually um, physically assaulted anybody on any robbery. In those 200 robberies, nobody was physically assaulted. Now, I do understand, having done a certain amount of work on myself whilst in prison, that it doesn't always have to be physical injuries with people. People can be traumatised just by the fact of what's happening. So, I kind of saw myself as a gentleman robber, if you like, and the people, <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but the people I worked with were the same. We wouldn't take drugs to go on a robbery, we wouldn't drink, to, you had to be stone cold sober. Um, we wouldn't actually physically assault anybody. As a friend of mine years ago, an old robber, who I knew years ago, told me, if you, when you're robbing a bank, if you don't want anybody to interfere with what you're doing, have a go, like have a go hero, you have to be more frightening and menacing than anybody else. So you have to absolutely terrify people into compliance. And I was pretty good at that. I was a pretty big bloke and I could do a really good growl. And, um, you know, I wasn't, uh, I never discharged a, a gun on a robbery, but I, I could put people where I wanted them just through the force of my personality, if you like. Have you ever met any of the staff after that? I mean, obviously they, they won't recognize you, but have you then after some time, just, just pass by to see how they are. And uh, have you actually met those people mm. that, that, that you met while you were with your mask on and your gun in your hand? Uh, only one, actually. I, I used to bank, I used to uh, make a speciality of robbing the Midland Bank, which is now gone, it's now the HSBC. <laughs> and the HSBC is now my actual bank where I have an account. Okay. And I, and I, when I first got out of prison and I went in to open an account, uh, one of the cashiers behind the counter said, you look very familiar. <laughs> Have you been in here before? So I said, well, no. I said, well, I used to rob the Midland Banks and he used to work in the Midland Banks. And he said, I'm sure you robbed me 20 years ago. So he kind of recognized me when I came in, but because he'd been in court and given evidence. Um, so that's the only person I've really met out of, uh, out of any of the robberies. So did you become friends after that? No, oh. no, no. <laughs> So uh, you mentioned you, you, you keep your money in the bank. Mm. Nowadays, I do. Aren't you scared of that, knowing that it might be gone? <laughs> no, I think um, bank robbery is finished now. You know, it's anybody who's, who's sensible has given up robbing banks because there's no money involved in it anymore. You're getting, you know, you've got die packs that explode and make the money solid. You've got uh, glue packs, rather smart water shooting screens, lockable doors. It's, it's just, the game has changed so much over the last 35 years. When I first started out, you could go into a bank, jump over the counter and help yourself. Nowadays, you've got screens, bulletproof screens and whatever. Security really has improved. I mean, a, a lot of the people now, a bank robbery is, is dead, as I say, and, and the only thing that's really viable that criminals are doing is tiger kidnappings, where they follow the bank manager home and then make him come back and open the vault. But that's, you know, it's a long game and I'm too old for all that, so. <laughs> What's the main message in your five books, then? What would you advise the uh, youngsters who are growing up now, watching TV, playing, t playing games online, and, uh, you know, dream to do something special one day? Mm. They don't know exactly what that special thing would be, and um, they, they might take the wrong way at some point. What, what, what would you just tell them 
from your position now? I think the overall message of, of my autobiographical books is that in the end crime doesn't pay. I know it sounds a cliche and it is a cliche but crime does not pay. As I said, the money I earned from Robin I could have earned working for 25 and not spent that time in jail. People think that um, crime and in particular armed robbery is a, is a sort of glamorous profession. But I mean at the end of the day really People like me, we're just scumbag thieves with a gun, you know? That's the only difference, is we, we, will, we won't sneak into your house and take your property, we will just like, go to places like banks and take the money because of some skewed uh, feeling that the banks actually owe us. And I think I was ahead of my time, really, because the banks do actually owe us now, but when I was <laughs> running, they didn't. But my advice to anybody um, who is thinking of taking up a life of crime, particularly youngsters, is don't do it. I mean, you... It's not worthy. It's not worth it, and I mean, our prisons are not the, the, the worst in the world, but they're not the best, and I mean, if you spend any amount of time in a British prison, you will suffer, seriously. Noel, thank you very much for that interview. No problem. It was a pleasure to meet you here at the Bloomberg Studio. Same as, thank you.